wonderful endeavor. Um, as you all know, this is like probably one of the biggest decisions that we have made as a school division and one of our largest projects um, that we've done in a little while. So I'm really looking forward to, you know, this journey that we're all about to go on. And uh, one, we hope that you all will be support and advisors to us throughout this process. Um, that's really what this is truly all about. I'm sure some of you are like, what have I signed up for? And what have I got myself into? Uh, but really what you've gotten yourself into is making for the entire Alexandria community. I really think that this is definitely going to be a game changer for the next generation um, of students because we are doing something uh, that is very innovative called the Connected High School Network where uh, we're keeping one high school in the city of Alexandria and having multiple pathways to provide students with the necessary services that they need so that they can go out into the world to do whatever they choose um, to be successful. And um, this is, this is going to be major, uh, major for us, but you all are going to, to definitely be along this journey with us. So my job was one to kick us off and um, to thank you all for one saying yes to be a part of this group. Uh, and two, uh, I wanted to just thank you for your, your, your dedication and your service because I know that everybody has so many other things going on in their lives. And that's in addition to this global pandemic that we're all experiencing. Um, but for you to be willing to, to join us and to be a part of this, it really means a lot to the school division. So without anything else, um, I'm going to turn things over to, uh, to Ms. Gulick to get us started. Thank you, Dr. Hutchings, and thank you all again for joining. We're really excited to get started with you all. Um, I'm going to just kick things off and then turn it over to Azuka Bartlett, our um, Senior Capital Program Manager, who is managing the high school project. But if we could go to the next slide. Um, so just what we're talking about tonight, again, we only have uh, now down to 25 minutes before the community meeting, which we are hoping you'll all join and be a part of, but wanted to really kick off uh, with this team here to discuss some protocols um, and just how this team will function, what we're asking you to do, what type of feedback is requested, and then just understanding the design process. Go to the next slide. So we want to introduce the advisory team members. Um, and just in the interest of time, I will actually read your name. Um, and if you could just come off mute and say here, so you pop up on the public screen, that would be great. Uh, so first we have Ramey Gentry from the school board. I'm sorry, here, okay. your, that, time, that, that time it worked. Hello everyone. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, Kana Kagire, who is our city council member. That's actually, I'm here to represent him because he's in another meeting and he will join as soon as he can. <laughs> okay, no problem. Thank you. Uh, Oscar Gonzalez, who I believe is Transportation Commission. Oh, I do see him. Can you hear? Oh, we can't hear you, Oscar but I do see you, so you are here. We'll move on. Vivian Ramirez with the Planning Commission. Hi, this is Suad, the Arabic interpreter. I was having issues to sign uh, a login. I just joined now. Oh, okay. Erin, uh, do you wanna just take over for a second and just direct the um, interpreter, get, get the interpreter in the right room? And sorry, Erica, um, this is Vivian Ramirez. I am here. Thank you, Vivian. We're just gonna pause for a second to make sure um, our interpreter can be in the right room.
Suat, are you still on the call? Yes, I am. Okay, I'll keep going while you're figuring that out, Erin, if that's okay. No um, our next uh, representative is uh, Katie Matthews with the Parks and Recreation Commission. I am here. Uh, next is Stephen Izaguirre from Fairlington Town Condo Association. Good evening, I'm here. Great. Um, Tom Fulton is next with Seminary Hill Association. Hi, how are you? Uh, Linda Williams with Alexandria PTA Council. Sorry, I'm here. Great. I was going to say I saw her. Uh, Mr. Peter Ballas, the, our principal. Good evening, here. Cheryl Mills, our Mini Howard campus principal. Good evening, everyone. Okay, and then we have some students. So Taylor Frazier, who's a high school student. I thought I saw him too. Or, I'm not sure. Uh, next we have Emma Tagia. Sorry if I'm saying that wrong. Is she here? You see Taylor, you might just. Taylor's here, she's here. Oh, Taylor's here, okay, great. Uh, is Emma here, Pete? I'm looking. I don't see her. Okay. Um, Masari Kalsadi. Oh. Yes, I'm here. Good evening, everyone. Oh, Maima Kadir. Yes, I'm here. Okay. Uh, Erica Lee. Let's see her. Okay, um, then we have Carlton Woodhead from Jefferson Houston. I'm here. Great. Ezra Mirig from Francis Hammond. No, okay. And Kelly Mayer from the EDT. Hi, everyone. Great. Erica, I, uh, just so you know, Erica, for um, attendance purposes, I do see Emma. Okay, great. Welcome, Emma. Okay, uh, I'm now actually gonna turn it over to um, uh, the, a big focus for these meetings will be on the design of the new Mini Howard building. Um, and we have a, our architect team is here with us tonight to introduce themselves. So I'll, I'll actually turn it over to Sean O'Donnell, uh, who's a principal with Perkins Eastman. Great. Thanks, Erica. Good evening, everybody. Um, we're excited to be here with you tonight. Um, I thought what we would do is just uh, do a brief introduction to who we are and, uh, and how we think. And so you see uh, a slide that we put together to introduce ourselves. Um, Perkins Eastman uh, is an international firm uh, focused on school design, but many other buildings that build our community as well. But one of the hallmarks of our school design practice is the creation of great, sustainable, high-performance learning environments. So we truly believe that architecture really enhances education. So we're after you know that inspiration and that synergy in, in our architecture in many ways. But another hallmark of our practice is that we believe that schools are truly the centers of their communities, you know, generating and bringing together people in all sorts of great and exciting manner. So we're excited to start that conversation with you here as well. Um, we have done a lot of work here uh, in the Washington metro area. You see John Adams Elementary School, the Early Childhood Center, you know, in the upper left here as well. But we've also done you know, a number of high schools of note that we think have um, you know, significant interest to this project, including Dunbar High School off to the right. And we also have a net zero project in Banneker High School down in the center of, of the, the building under construction right now. So again, bringing resource conservation, educational uh, environments and community connectivity is uh, in many ways what we're after on the project. So I'm Sean O'Donnell again, uh, principal in charge for the project. Also with us tonight is Omar Calderon. He's the design principal uh, for the project and responsible for, you know, in many ways, the, the visualization of, of the architecture that we'll be creating. Andrea Shaw is our project manager, another uh, colleague of ours, uh, you know, and somebody who's done a, a great amount of work uh, in Northern Virginia and delivering great schools to the communities across Northern Virginia. 
And then also further demonstrating our commitment to the Alexandria community. Teresa Del Nino is here with us as well from McGinnis Del Nino, who's our associate architect on the project. Again, ensuring that uh, we truly respond to the needs of Alexandria here. And uh, Teresa's daughter is actually on the design team too and is a TC grad, uh, so or um, uh, graduate of the school. So. We're excited to be here and uh, look forward to working with you through the project. Thank you, Sean. Um, as Erica mentioned, uh, we're going through, uh, we would like to go through the, what, um, the feedback that we're requesting from the superintendent's advisory um, team. Um, as an additional resource to the high school project team, we're asking the superintendent advisory team um, to provide input to ensure that there is, a uh, there is a consistency between the school design and uh, the uh, school design and the environmental and cultural considerations um, uh, within the neighborhood, as well as in the larger Alexandria community. Additionally, we're asking um, the team members to represent uh, the, uh, the interest of their groups and associations they have been chosen to serve. Um, to represent their community at large, to uh, represent the parents and the schools um, within the community, um, as well as participate in all the scheduled meetings and be a conduit for feedback between the um, advisory, um, uh, advisor, uh, superintendent advisory team, and as well as the, your community throughout the process. Next slide, please. We wanted to go through the design process. Um, we are uh, we have gone through a um, couple years of planning for this project, and currently we're in the um, concept phase of the project. The design visioning survey that's out in the community right now, um, and as well as the feedback from tonight um, tonight's meetings, um, in, will inform the concepts that are the uh, Perkins Eastman, our design team, is working on. And following the uh, concepts, the um, design will process through the schematic design development and construction documents phases. Through the design development, during the design development phase, uh, we'll apply for the development special use permit application. And um, uh, the development special use approval process will continue through the end of year 2021 and early 2022. Um, our, um, we're, uh, we're anticipating the superintendent's advisory team to work with us through the DSUP approval process and successfully complete the design process with us until the construction start. Next slide, please. Near-term decisions, uh, as some of you may, may be aware, we have gone through co-location options test fits back in January and February. School board had made a decision on February 4th to um, not include affordable housing as part of the considerations. Um, in February and March, we have worked on the comprehensive program and educational specifications document for the Mini Howard campus. And this document is, um, uh, is informing the design, the concept designs for the, um, for the project. Um, <clears throat> the upcoming near-term decisions are, uh, for March 18th, we'll be presenting the three concepts to the school board. And we're anticipating for school board to make a decision on April 8th to choose one out of the three concepts. Next slide, please. And here's our engagement calendar for a uh, near future. Um, as you can see, we're doing the kickoff meeting this today and will be followed by a community of a, uh, community uh, meeting this evening. We encourage all of you to participate in tonight's community meeting. It's a separate link. Um, and then after that, we'll have a community meeting on March 16th from 6 to 7 p.m. Um, during this meeting, we'll uh, present the three initial concepts. Um, and following the community meeting, we'll have the superintendent's advisory team meeting from 7 to 8 p.m. Um, our team member will send out a hold to your calendars shortly after the community meeting this evening. Um, after that, we have March 18th uh, meeting, as I mentioned earlier, to present the concept designs. And then on March 
25th, we're anticipating another community meeting followed by superintendent's advisory team meeting. On April 8th, um, we're anticipating a school board to vote on a concept. And on April 12th, we are having another meeting as a follow-up to the decision that's been made by the school board. Next slide, please. Um, as part of this process, um, the, um, this process is moving very fast and March is a kind of pivotal point for, for us. And we have three meetings scheduled in this month. Uh, and we apologize for that. Um, but moving forward, we're anticipating about one month, one meeting a month through um, through the year of 2022 and early spring of 2022, as I mentioned earlier. Um, and that's um, when we're, um, our goal is to wrap up the design process and um, transition into construction. Next slide, please. And as I mentioned earlier, there's a visioning survey out in our community. Uh, we have received so, so far a good amount of um, submissions, I think about 175. We're continuing to uh, receive comments. Uh, it will be open until the March 10th, this Wednesday. Um, and then uh, we have a community meetings that are um, upcoming this evening, as well as on March 16th. And um, if you have any questions and comments, please feel free to email us at, at the high school project email address, as well as check out, check out our website um, written here. And next slide, please. And just wanted to thank everyone again. Uh, maybe if anyone has any questions or comments, may, uh, we, can, um, we can entertain those at this time. Yes, I have one question. Um, why is the community meeting first and then our meeting? Is there a reason for that? I can answer this question maybe. We've gone back and forth on that a lot. Honestly, if, if we're being honest, um, we've had that conversation. We found in the past um, that Sometimes advisory teams want to hear what the community has to say before they come back together. Um, other times the advisory group may want to hear it first, but um, considering you all are really in these roles representing a larger body, we just set it up that way so that the um, community could meet, you could hear what they had to say and then have your kind of your more focused discussion. So we can change that in the future, um, you know, after March. Uh, if we think it works better a different way, but for right now, that's how we have it set up. Yeah, it's helpful when um, the advisory group gets to kind of hear some of the reactions and see some of the reactions of the community, because then from that, you begin to hear things from that presentation that you bring uh, to the team for the next meeting. So, um, you know, I we, we really do think that having that insight will help you be better advisors, um, you know, to, to, to me and the team. Okay, great. Well, if we don't have other questions, we don't need to hold you. We do sincerely hope that you join the 630 meeting um, as we will have some polling and just be asking general questions of the community. Uh, it would be great if you all participated in that um, and just gave more information on the Mini Howard campus. So thank you all. And I'm sure we will spend a lot of nights together. So I'm looking forward to this. How do we join the meeting? Uh, so there was a web, Erin, do you have, maybe you could put the link in the chat. Um, it was a public meeting invite that went out. Okay, so if we have that link in our email, then we'll know how to join, but we're not linking to the meeting via this Zoom. No, it's a separate Zoom. So in this okay. meeting, you all are panelists because uh, it's kind of your discussion, but in the other meeting, you'll be community members uh, in, and participating in the webinar. So you'll be able to watch and engage in the polls, but you won't be panelists in this way. Uh, 
and link in the chat, which which is also which has the webinar the Zoom link in there. I'm going to put that link in the chat just now. Okay, thanks, Erin. I think it was on the last slide too, but they can't click on it from there. Okay. All right, thank you all. Well, if you have the, um, there you go. There's, oh, oh, that's the link, the link to the web page, which will also have it. Yes. Thank you. Okay, thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you. See you shortly. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.